The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It was 1990-something, and my younger brother who snowboarded got a new snowboard, and so he offered me one day his old snowboard if I wanted to change from skiing, which I had done for a season or two. But he warned me, snowboarding is a lot harder than what it looks like. It's very different than skiing. And if I took the snowboard and went out with him one day, he promised me that it would be a day of only frustration and falling down continually. But, but in the end, it would be worth it. He was right. That first day I went out there, I strapped that snowboard on, and I thought I could do it because I could ski, but as soon as I started going down that hill, I fell on my butt. I fell time and time and time again. I fell on my butt. I fell on my side. I fell on my head. I fell every way I think you can possibly think to fall. I had snow up my shirt. I had snow in my boots. It was an absolutely frustrating and miserable day for about eight hours straight. And then at the very end, my last run of the day, I finally went down that hill, didn't fall, could turn and even stopped without falling on my butt at the end. Had he not warned me, had he not warned me about how hard it was going to be during that eight-hour day of doing nothing but falling, had he not warned me, I probably would have given up and went and traded that snowboard back in for my old skis. I might have missed out on the joy that I know that is snowboarding that I now get to do with my own kids. The Gospel of Mark begins with a warning to. If we're going to be Christian, then you better know what you're getting yourself into. It is a lot harder than it looks, but like snowboarding, once you get the hang of it, it is worth it. The gospel begins with a warning in the form of John being in jail, John the Baptist being in the, in the jail, because you see, John always, because that is what ministry is, pushed back against this world and this world's ways and even this world's rulers. He pushes back to make the world a better place, and it pushes back on him. The gospel begins with a warning for us. John is in jail. He got in trouble for doing what ministry is. And for Jesus, as he steps onto the scene, as Jesus steps into the gospel, just about to speak his very first words in the gospel, it is made clear to him and to us 
that if Jesus steps forward into this ministry, it is going to mean the same thing for him as it did for John. And we know it will. We've read the story. We know that not only is John the Baptist in jail now, but he's about to get his head cut off. And if Jesus takes this step into ministry, he too will be thrown in jail and crucified for trying to make this world a better place. Joining the ministry to make the world a better place means consequences, dire consequences, and even enemies. The proof for us in that is the people who do ministry in this book. For all of them, it is not easy. For all of them who are trying to make the world a better place, this world pushes back on them. We know it's true with John the Baptist. We know it's true with Jesus. And we see it in every one of St. Paul's letters. If we're going to step forward into this ministry, we are being warned today that it is not going to be easy. We've been warned. We have been warned today, and if you haven't heard it before, hear it now. We've been warned what it means to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And where do those footsteps lead? They lead to our cross, if we are actually going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, St. Paul, John the Baptist, or any that God calls into ministry. Yes, ministry comes with a warning. And that's because ministry is supposed to be difficult. If it's easy, if the ministry that we do we find to be easy, then we probably aren't changing the world very much. If it's a cakewalk, it isn't the ministry that Jesus and John or any of those in the gospel did. Even for them, even for them, the heroes, those who were the best equipped, even for them, it was dangerous. Even for Jesus Christ, even for God's self, it meant death. If we are disciples, we can't walk away the first time that it gets hard. Because when it gets hard, that's our sign that we're finally doing it right. We're finally doing the things that God is telling us to do in ministry, asking us to do in the name of Jesus Christ. And yes, there are a lot of dangers in ministry. What are they? We may ask ourselves, if you've been in ministry, you have some insights. What Jesus tells us is that it means being around certain people that we might not naturally go to. It means being around people that think differently than us, that look different than us. It means being with, and Jesus gives us a list in Matthew, it means actually being with those who are hungry. Being with those who are thirsty, and not just for water, but for justice, for equity, for liberty. It means being with the strangers, those that we've never met before, those that others have told us are bad. Doing ministry means being with the sick. It means being with the imprisoned those that this world has told us very clearly are the wrongdoers. Jesus tells us that in ministry, we're supposed to be with anybody in any need because that's where we know Jesus would be. And being his presence, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be with all those that this world tells us are the bad people. 
because they've gotten what they deserved. They're in prison for a reason. They're sick for a reason. They're hungry for a reason. But we all know that that is not what Jesus teaches us. Jesus teaches us that they deserve more. And we are the ones that are supposed to bring that into their lives. And we chicken out a lot, I think, to do what we are called to do. Jesus doesn't just tell us to keep them in our thoughts and prayers, but to do something real, like the people in this book do. To do something real. I saw a meme the other day that I really like that expresses this point. In it, Satan said, Satan said that thought and prayers thing, that was my idea. People are happy to give money. People are happy to support as long as we don't have to be around those dirty, bad people. As long as we really don't have to associate them, we're happy to do something. And yes, we are supposed to have the mind of Christ. They are supposed to be in our thoughts and prayers, and we are to be unified in this ministry. But we also claim that our hands and feet are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, and those hands and those feet, they need to be doing something too. Jesus' hands and feet in this world are to be doing something to make this world a better place. Jesus' very first words in the gospel, he speaks today in the first chapter of Mark. And he tells us many things that are all leaning in to this warning about what ministry is really about and what he has really come to do. And maybe we've read past it, a thousand times. He says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come here. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the good news. He warns us here. Jesus is warning us here with his very first words that if we've gotten comfortable in this world, then you better watch out because everything is about to change. That he and his disciples are about to step into this world and shake everything up. And not only that, not only is the world going to change, but that we, that we are supposed to change. Repent, he calls it. It means radical reorientation. And it doesn't mean something you did a long time ago when you decided to be a Christian. It means something that God is going to be doing to us every single day of our lives, changing us into a little bit more of that image of Christ for the world. Because if the gospel, if the gospel doesn't change us dramatically every time we encounter it, then we haven't really heard it. Many people understand the gospel to just be a source of comfort, and it is in many ways. But the gospel is the most uncomforting thing in our lives, too. It is here to shake us up. It is meant to shake us up, to shake the seat out from underneath our butts and get us up in doing something to make this world a better place. Ministry means, ministry means being made uncomfortable. That happens to every single person doing ministry in this book. And we would be fools to think that it doesn't mean that for us too. If our ministry doesn't push us, if our ministry doesn't push us beyond our comfort level into something new that God is introducing to us and to this world, then we need to stop pushing back on what Jesus is telling us to do. We've been warned. Chapter 1, and we are already warned. And now we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it for me?
this is our warning today. It's not going to be easy for any of us to start following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, and it will not be easy for any of us to continue on today in the ministry. The question is, are you in? Are you really in? My advice, like my brother offering me his old snowboard, it is worth it. But it isn't what you think, just watching others do it. Amen.